This module on Unix file types doesn't really fit anywhere else. It's got nothing to do with links. It's just good general knowledge. And it all has to do with Unix file systems, so I thought it might go in this chapter quite well. You recall that I mentioned earlier that Unix really doesn't have any notion of a file type in the same sense that Windows has a notion of a file type, like a Word document or a text document or an HTML document or a .exe file, which you could call a program. Windows uses the three-letter extension of file names to determine what type of file that is. In other words, what program it should be started with. Unix doesn't have any such notion at least not as far as the shell is concerned. However, there is a sort of a notion of a file type, but it's got nothing to do with what we just mentioned. And that is, remember I said to you earlier that everything in Unix is a file, absolutely everything. A file, a regular file is a file, a directory is a file, and there are even other things that are files. Yes, well, all of that is true, and it is actually possible to determine which files are which type of entity. In other words, it's possible to determine which files are actually directories, which files are regular files, and which files are other things. Let's have a look at that now. When you do an ls-l, you'll find that regular files are denoted in the very first character as a dash. Let's just quickly refresh our memory on that. There's a typical ls-l listing, and you'll notice that most of the files that you see begin, the line begins with a dash, and that dash indicates that the file is a regular file. There are a few other types of files. You already know that one of them is a directory. Let's have a look at what those are. This is a little table of such. Well, if ls-l shows that the first character is a D, then the thing is a directory. In other words, it's a container for other files. We've also seen that if it's an L, then it's a symbolic link. In other words, it's a reference to another file. What we haven't seen is that some files actually represent character devices. In other words, they're not files at all in the sense that you could store data in them. They're actually a reference to a piece of hardware. Character devices are usually things like serial ports. It is possible to read data from a serial port, and it's possible to write data to a serial port just in the same way it's possible to read and write data to and from a file. When you're reading and writing data to a serial port, you typically do it one character at a time. Thus, serial ports are called character devices. Let me show you an example of a character device. If I go into the slash dev directory, which is short for slash device, I find just about every device file in Unix is in here, including character devices. So what I'll do now is I'll just list some of those. I'll do an ls minus l of all the files that begin with tty and there will be so many of them I'll pipe the results to more and there's a bunch of them as you can see. Notice that they all begin with the letter C. Files that begin with tty are typically terminals as in a keyboard and a screen attached to the system computer. Terminals are often connected by serial ports and so on so it's quite reasonable to see them as being a character device. Now, notice that the file size here is actually two columns. It's 5,0 and 4,0 and 4,1. That's not actually a file size at all. It's actually a major and minor devi device number. So I know that you don't know what those are, and I wouldn't worry about it at this point. I just wanted to show you that they exist and what they look like. You won't be able to manipulate them, typically because they are manipulated by the operating system instead. We also have block devices, which again, are, they represent hardware, but in this, this case it's not character-related hardware, it's block-based hardware. What does that mean? Well, when a hard disk is being accessed, the data that is being read from the hard disk or written to the hard disk is typically read one block of data at a time as opposed to one character at a time. So such devices are known as block devices. So yes, there is a file on the disk that re represents, if you like, the entire hard disk. And that device can be read from and written to, but not by you. In fact, not by any user, only by the operating system in a very special and complex way. And no, it doesn't have a file size, which represents the size of the hard disk. Let's have a look. 
Here's a similar listing, but this time for all files in the, in the slash dev directory that begin with HD. HD is short for hard disk. And you can see again that these are all B files. They're block devices. And again, they don't have any meaningful size. That again is a major and minor device number. We also have a few other ones like P, which is short for pipe, which is a communications file. Certain programs can write data into the pipe while other programs are simultaneously reading data from the pipe and so you can get programs that can communicate with each other. There's also an S which is short for socket which is a similar sort of thing, it's a communications file and there's one or two others and sometimes they actually depend on the version of Unix that you're running. Anyway, I just wanted to show them to you, show you, show you that they exist so that you don't wonder what they are when you eventually stumble across them.